FlyQ Insight, aviation's first augmented reality app. What is augmented reality? Well, what we do is we take the live video feed that you get from the camera in your iPhone or your iPad, and we merge it in real time with computer-generated airport position markers. You'll, take, you'll see that in a second. To do this, you don't need anything fancy. You just need your iPhone or your iPad, providing it has a GPS. You don't need goggles, headsets, or any kind of uh, ridiculously expensive hardware. To make this work, though, we have to calibrate it a little bit. Luckily, we have patent pendings on this on how to make the calibration nice and easy to do. The main point, though, is to use a button that's called Front, which I'll demonstrate in a bit, which is in the upper right corner of the app. So let's have a look. We're sitting on the runway right now. We're not moving, so that Front button in the upper right is clear, meaning it's just using the compass in your plane. Once we start moving, however, then I can tap on the Front button and it becomes yellow. You do that while you're pointing straight out the front of the aircraft, hence the name. At this point, the gyros are now calibrated to where the front of the aircraft was. And that works really well for a while, but it, the gyros tend to what's called process a little bit. They wobble. So now what I've done is I've pressed and held the front button for a couple of seconds, called the long press. And now the front button goes from yellow to green. In green, it's not paying any attention to how you rotate the iPhone or the iPad around. Rather, all that it's doing is it's taking a look at the track that your aircraft is making and assuming that the iPad or the iPhone is pointing straight out the nose of the aircraft. That means that even as you're taking a turn, like we are now, it's going to constantly update the aircraft that are in front, rather the airports, that are right in front of your plane. Notice that they kind of move uh, vertically a little bit during a turn. It's a little bit like the magnetic compass in your plane when you take a turn. It just gets a little bit off for a second while you're in the middle of a turn. Once you stop the turn, though, it becomes nice and solid. Now, what you can do to make it even more accurate is to hit the calibrate button or the wind calibrate button below front. What that does is that tells the system to compensate not just for the track of the aircraft but for the wind vectors, so basically winds aloft. To do this is really simple and you don't have to do this often. You just do this once at a particular altitude. You basically give it your magnetic hitting, which you can get from your compass or your DG, spin that little compass card on the left side around or use the minus and the plus button to fine tune it and then use the up and down slider under airspeed to get the airspeed right. That's all you have to do and it gets really accurate. Now in this case though, here's how you can filter out airports. We're not flying of course anymore, but I can turn on filters to show private airports. I can show all those helipads. I can show, eh, let's not show the helipads. I can show the seaplane bases like that if you're in an area like here with a lot of those. Normally we hide airports that have short runways, but if you tap that button, it will show you the airports with a less than 2,500 foot runway. By the way, you can change that number in settings. You can also move this little slider down the bottom. It goes anywhere from 5 nautical miles to 100. And as you move it left and right, it's basically telling you airports that are a certain distance away. So as you make the number higher, you will show more airports. As you make the number lower, you'll see fewer airports, and you'll see the airports begin to fade in and fade out. Okay? So that's a great system for describing exactly what you want to look at. As you spin it around though, you'll find that you can also take a look at what we call the 2D view. In this 2D view, which we got by tapping that little button on the bottom in the lower right corner, it actually will show you, as you're spinning around, what all the airports are in front of you. It's pretty cool. One of my favorite features though is when you tap on an airport marker, it gives you very detailed information about that airport. You see the weather, you see general airport diagrams, you can tap on a METAR or TAF and even see it large. It's pretty slick. To get back, you hit the camera button on the tab bar, it's the one on the lower left, and now you're back at the camera view. Speaking of camera, you can obviously use it to take pictures. There's a circular button in the middle lower of the screen that is a, looks like a shutter button. I just clicked it. To look at those, you just take a look at the uh, button down there. It says Photos at the bottom. And in the Photos tab, you can switch between all the photos that you took. Notice that it takes two photos, one with markers and one without. If you want to send that to Facebook or Instagram or something like that, you hit the button in the upper right that's called the Action button, and then you can print it, email it, send it to Facebook, whatever you want to do. It's pretty slick. So let's recap the way that you use FlyQ Insight. The key is the front button. When the front button is clear, the system is using the internal compass. It's not especially accurate, especially in a uh, kind of a mechanically and electrically noisy aircraft. When the front button is yellow, which you do by just a tap, you point the 
iPad or the iPhone straight out the front of the airplane, tap it so it turns yellow, and then the gyros get calibrated thinking that's front. Over time, it will tend to drift a little bit, or what's called process, and it will do that relatively quickly. You can use this, though, to look around, because you can move the iPad or the iPhone left and right and behind you, and it will show you the airports that are in that approximate position. When you want to see real accuracy, though, you can set up the system so that you long press on the green button, rather long press on the front button so it turns green. When it turns green, that means that it's locked to the GPS track of your aircraft. So if you move the iPad left or right, it has no effect on what it's showing you. But if the aircraft moves, if the aircraft is turning, you still see the airports that are in front of the nose of the airplane. And then for best accuracy, you hit the button that says WinCal. On the WinCal button, you uh, dial in your magnetic hitting and your speed. You only have to do this again once while you're flying. And then the system calculates a wind vector and can uh, compute the difference between your ground track and how the wind is affecting it to give you extremely accurate uh, positions about all those airport markers. So that's how you calibrate FlyQ Insight. The main thing to remember is hit the front button.